I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape 5 on Friday, Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 11th of December, 2020. On the news today. Okay, yeah, we have a problem here today. The U.S. House of Representatives is underhandedly inserting language into the omnibus spending bill to guarantee passing the Preventing Online Sales of E-Cigarettes to Children Act. Say hello to the U.S. vape mail ban. And say hello to the Prevent All Cigarette Trafficking Act, a.k.a. the PAC Act. Because now all vape retailers will be required to collect all vape taxes before shipping your order. In San Francisco, all the fighting... All the fighting has gotten the San Francisco ban to fail. Despite last week when we talked about the fact that they even included an exclusion for cannabis. Yep. They tried making it so that you could smoke all the weed you want as long as you didn't smoke cigarettes or vape. Well, that ban failed. Thank God it failed. And now... A California tobacco group seeks referendum to overtone the state's draconian flavor ban. Yeah. Are you ready for a volley round two? In California, San Diego lab finds that nearly 80% of illicit vape cartridges are tainted with vitamin E acetate. And in Canada, the Canadian Vaping Association chastises Christian Dubé for trying to implement vaping restrictions and prohibitions. In the UK, a Merseyside store director was fined after more than a thousand bottles of vape liquid were found to contain excess, excess nicotine and not have proper labeling, according to the TPD. For our science segment, we jump down to Australia, where world-renowned tobacco harm reduction specialist Colin Mendelson debunks the infamous Gateway Theory paper. And our highlighted advocacy group for today is Americans for Tax Reform. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Let's jump down into the news. Okay, our first article today comes from Vaping360. This is an urgent call to action. We need you to contact Congress because the Democrats are now inserting, at the House of Representatives, are inserting the Preventing Online Sales of E-Cigarettes to Children Act into the Omnibus Spending Bill. The Omnibus Spending Bill is what allows the United States government to increase their credit limit increase their borrowing capacity, and let the government continue to operate despite being in the red. In the middle of a global pandemic, they're playing games with your rights and gambling on the fact that they can ban vaping so long as, you know, you don't notice and say anything about it. Well, article in the Vaping 360 shows you your only recourse at this point. And I know you're sick and tired of hearing the, the advocates push for these CASA call to actions. But unfortunately, it's the only thing that we can do to show our displeasure about these ridiculous laws. Here's how ridiculous this law is because they're not just incorporating the Senate Bill 1253, AKA the vape mail ban into the omnibus spending bill. They're also including language from the Prevent All Cigarette Trafficking Act into the omnibus spending bill. Yep. So, what does this mean if you're a retailer of vape products? Well, if this law passes, and if these Democrats get to include this into the omnibus spending bill, not only will it be illegal for them to ship your vape mail using the United States Postal Service, not only are they gonna be required to use a private carrier, 
that is going to be forced into getting a signature before delivering your vape mail, which adds cost to your vape mail, they will also be required to collect all vape taxes in your order prior to shipping your devices to you. Yeah, we've referred to this as the vape mail ban for so long, and everybody's gotten kind of lax about the fact that, you know, oh, it'll never pass. It's only got 40% approval, 40% chance of passing. Well, if they include it into the omnibus spending bill, it will not be opposed by either party, nor will it be vetoed by President Trump, because in the middle of a global pandemic, they need the money to continue fighting the pandemic. They need to keep the government operating. That's why it is crucial that vapors and vaping businesses contact their representatives immediately and demand that the language from Senate Bill 1253 not be included in the omnibus spending bill. The fighting continues. In California, we talked about how San Francisco tried to ban smoking in apartments. In your own apartment, you were going to be banned from smoking and vaping. When that failed, what did they do? We talked about that last week. They included an exclusion for cannabis. So you could smoke all the cannabis and the marijuana you wanted so long as you didn't smoke a cigarette or vape. Fortunately, the ban failed. The ban failed in San Francisco, but the fighting did get the attention of big tobacco groups. And now, R.J. Reynolds, Philip Morris, and IGT Brands is now forming a tobacco group and will fight for the draconian law in California to be overturned. California has a flavor ban that has already been passed. And the only way to undo that is by referendum. Referendum is where you, as a California resident, will be able to vote in the next election on overturning this ridiculous draconian law. And unfortunately, the only ones that have the money and the resources to do something like this is the big tobacco players, the big tobacco companies. They're the only ones that can fight against the Bloomberg philanthropies, the Bill Gates, the billionaires, the trillionaires with their elitist agendas. And they put their money in where their mouth is. To the shock of many, the coalition was claimed to be paying professional signature gatherers $10 per name. And it's now been reported that the group has managed to collect and submit over 1 million petition signatures to add this referendum to your election ballot. The law goes too far and is unfair. The flavor ban in California. It will hurt small businesses and takes jobs from licensed retailers who do not sell tobacco products. Because just like this product contains no tobacco derivative, vape products, the only tie that they have to big tobacco is the nicotine. And that's if they choose to include it in their e-juice. However, technically, you can have artificial nicotine that's created in a lab and is technically not a derivative of the tobacco plant. Well, take a look at this article in the Vaping Post if you want to learn more about the referendum in California. Also in California, the fighting continues. A San Diego lab finds nearly 80% of illicit vape cartridges are tainted. Yeah. 80% of cartridges 
are tainted. Illicit black market cannabis oil cartridges are tainted with vitamin E acetate. What's this mean? A volley round two is down the horizon and it's coming closer and closer every day. This is what happens when draconian laws are passed and people want the product that is now considered banned. A black market thrives and there's no regulations that apply to the people that manufacture products for the black market. And that's exactly what's happening with these cannabis oil cartridges. 80% of them contain vitamin E acetate because they need to cut the oil. So what do they cut it with? Vitamin E acetate. And what does vitamin E acetate do to the user of these cannabis oil cartridges? It gives them lipoid pneumonia, but they're not gonna be diagnosed with lipoid pneumonia because as soon as the doctor or the radiologist finds out that they were using a cannabis oil vape, they're gonna be labeled with the volley. And what is the mainstream media gonna do with that information? Are they gonna tell you that, that these guys were smoking an illegal product? Are they gonna tell you that they were using a vape oil device? Or are they just gonna be ignorant and complicit in labeling it a vape product? time the nicotine vapors refer to their products as safer nicotine products and drop the vape label because the stigmatism now associated with vaping has gotten to the point where there is no hope in undoing the damage that they are continually doing to this industry on a daily basis and it isn't limited to the United States oh no let's jump to our northern border the Canadian Vaping Association responds to Minister Christian Dubé's proposed policy changes to implement further restrictions and prohibitions. Even in Canada, they're fighting for the rights of vapors. Yep. Safer nicotine product and tobacco harm reduction mean nothing to people like him. In their mind, you're a tobacco product, so you need to go away. The Canadian Vaping Association is fighting and trying to get common sense legislation passed. Minister Dubé on his initiatives to protect youth effective policy does not prohibit these products altogether, but instead restricts their sale to age restricted specialty stores. That's common sense by which government of Quebec's own admission meet a high standard of conformity in age verification and denying access to minors. There's also significant data to suggest that high nicotine concentrations and not flavors are the primary driver for youth use. Take a look at this article published in WCIZ.com. If you want to learn more about the Canadian situation. And just when you think you have a country you can turn to that does not have any problems with vaping and does not require significant advocacy. Yeah, well, we have an article published in Liverpool Echo in the UK a Merseyside store director was fined after more than a thousand bottles of vape liquid with excess nicotine in it were seized at his shop because they didn't have the proper labeling and they exceeded the nicotine levels imposed by the TPD. Take a look at this article if you want to find out more about how this store director was fined in the UK. And for our science segment for today, we're going to take a look at world renowned tobacco harm reduction specialist Colin Mendelson and Wayne Hall have had to refute 
the flawed gateway theory. The gateway theory is a theory that's being pushed to state that vaping leads to cigarette smoking. It's not true. How many studies need to be published that state the opposite before they are accepted? Smoking usually precedes vaping. That is the case. At least 70 to 85% of teen smokers try vaping after already started smoking. So when you make vaping unreachable, what are these people gonna do? They're gonna turn back to cigarettes. It's not the other way around. They didn't pick up a vape one day and say, oh, well, I guess I'll just start smoking since you know vaping isn't good enough for me. Vaping by adolescents is experimental and infrequent. Regular vaping is rare among non-smokers. Regular vaping by non-smokers is generally less than 1% in Australia and in international surveys. Many adolescent vapors use flavoring only and do not even use nicotine. Nicotine addiction, nicotine addiction is very rare in vapors who do not smoke. And in the US, less than 4% of non-smoking youth who vape have symptoms of nicotine dependency. Some adolescents use vaping to quit smoking because as we stated, they smoke first. Peer pressure gets them to smoke and then they use vaping like adults do to quit smoking. Youth vaping rates have declined rapidly in the United States and the UK since the introduction of vaping, making it very unlikely that is increasing youth smoking. It is more likely that vaping is diverting some high risk teens away from smoking and toward the safer nicotine products. Regurgitating a flawed theory is what happens in the mainstream media. And these studies that get retracted don't make the mainstream media because it has no effect on its viewers. It is boring. Therefore, they ignore it. And for this week, our highlighted advocacy group is Americans for Tax Reform. Americans for Tax Reform is a 501c4 taxpayer advocacy group who believes in a system in which taxes are simpler, flatter, more visible, and lower than they are today. The government's power to control one life derives from its power to tax. And they believe that the power should be minimized. And they believe that the only way you can do that is to lower the tax rates, regardless of why they are there. Why are we talking about Americans for Tax Reform? Well, they published an article, and I understand that this was a year ago. However, it's still relevant today. Vape flavor ban will devastate Main Street businesses nationwide. They published this article and it says the flavor ban pu pushers do not understand how personal and intense this issue is to millions of adult vapors who will vote next year. As shown in their compilation of local news reports, state imposed flavor bans are already devastating Main Street vape shops, their employees, and their adult customers who use flavors in order to quit smoking. These adults are highly motivated voting block who will punish any politician that imposes a flavor ban. Why are we talking about this today? Well, President Trump was the one who used his pen to sign Tobacco 21. That pissed a lot of people off. Do you think that they were going to vote for him after he signed Tobacco 21? Nope. 
he pissed a lot of vapors off when he potentially was going to ban flavors. And yes, he quickly did backpedal. However, the damage was done. Remember the signs that were held up in the protest in Washington, D.C.? We vape, we vote. There are 68 million vapors worldwide. And do you think that these vapors are going to walk silently by after somebody slaps them across the face? Nope. Nearly 96% of these vapor consumers are likely to vote in the 2020 general elections. Four in five, otherwise known as 85%, are definitely voting. And among the 4% who are less likely to vote, the majority, 59%, will likely come out to vote if lawmakers ban the sale and use of nicotine vapor products. Well... The reason we're talking about this is because the results of the election are upon us. Regardless of whether you agree with it or disagree with it, regardless of which way you voted, the facts of the matter are those people who vape voted. And they did not like the fact that President Trump signed Tobacco 21. They did not like the fact that President Trump even had a roundtable meeting about banning vaping flavors those people that approve of doc of uh, president trump 65 percent of them were less likely to vote for him again those people that were republicans were 65 percent less likely to vote for them in this election conservatives were 62 percent less likely to vote for him in this election Independent men were 83% less likely, and independent women were 79% less likely to vote for somebody who just got done adopting Tobacco 21, who just got done talking about banning flavored vapes. Yes, I understand that some people will say that the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. However, they were trying to send a message by voting the way they did. They voted for Joe Biden to be president because they wanted a change. They wanted somebody that wasn't going to straight up right put vaping center stage on the next legislative ban agenda. The FDA's Michael Bloomberg style push for flavored e-cigarette ban disregards the importance of flavors in transitioning adult smokers away from cigarettes onto less harmful alternatives otherwise known as safer nicotine products. In analysis published in the journal Harm Reduction last year, the evidence suggests that flavored products are the overwhelming preference for adults with tobacco and menthol, ranking outside the top five consumer preferences. Banning flavored e-cigarettes for adults will force adult vapors to go back to smoking or seek out products on the dangerous black market. We are where we are, and your voice matters. We vape, we vote matters. So, this is kind of a round robin. We're back to step one. In today's news report, I need you, if you're watching this, to take a few minutes out of your day, follow the CASA call to action, and notify your representatives of how you feel. Because if all of you do this, if all the vapors in this country stand up and say, no, we will not let you impose another draconian ban on a safer nicotine product, because this product got me to stop smoking deadly combustible cigarettes, they will listen because they want to keep their jobs. Please, follow the consult call to action. It's as simple as clicking on a single link, pre-populates the information for you. You can add your own perspective on the issue and let your representatives know that they must not include this in the omnibus spending bill because the spending bill will pass if it's included in there and it will pass if it's not included in there, 
This country cannot stop operating. It cannot shut the government down in the middle of a global pandemic. You need to let your representatives know to not let this language be included in the spending bill. Well, that concludes the news science and advocacy report for the 11th of December, 2020. And my message is still the same. Keep on vaping. Got you off of deadly combustible cigarettes. And it'll keep you off of them. Have a great day.